Okay, so writing unobtrusive JavaScript is really easy, actually. You, you, you really just stay away from modifying the HTML. As long as you can do that, you know, uh, the way that you go about it is there's, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, with pure JavaScript, because we haven't really learned jQuery yet, um, with pure JavaScript, uh, one of the easiest and most straightforward ways is by using um, add event listener and uh, binding to certain events. So um, what I want to show you is that I can, for any one of these cells, and actually I'm going to do it for every one of these cells, um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say div dot add event listener listener listener. Um, and the first parameter to add event listener is what you want the event to be. And I'll just say click. And the second is um, just the name of the function you want it to invoke. And in this case, it's just the name of the function. There's no parentheses after it. So we'll say clicked cell. So what this right here means is, hey, there's gonna there's got to be a function out there called that. And that's when the, that's what will get called with uh, whenever you click on uh, on something, but you you know you need to actually have an, a valid object that you're calling add event listener on. So you know if I only take the first cell like this cell right here, if I only for that div called add event listener, it's going to be the only one that's listening for the click event. But since you know I'm I put that inside of this method add event listener, and that method is being called here, which is inside of the in a double loop, it's going to be called for every single one of these cells. So I'm going to write this function, and this is this is the important part. So you know, a lot of people call this thing e, the one parameter that automatically gets sent to add event listener. It's the event, but I'm going to fully call it event. I hate it when people make variables called e or a or something like that. The only time I, I can abide it is when it's i and j for counters because people have been doing that for like a million years. So um, what happens is anything that you add an event listener to, that event gets passed to the invocation of the method automatically, which is really good because um, it gives you access to the object that was clicked on. So watch how powerful this is. Not only can you look at the event, but you can look at the event.target, and that is the object that was clicked on, this guy here, object clicked on or object, sorry, the tar well it's really the target of the event, but in this case, since it's the click event, it's the target, uh, it's the object that was clicked on, but obviously I don't need to add a comment called target event, something called event.target. So let's see these alerts when I actually click on something, anything, bing. So the first alert said, hey, this event is an object of type mouse event. And the second alert is, oh, the target of the event was an HTML div element. Well, that's perfect because that's exactly what I'm trying to get at. Oops, I must have clicked twice. So what I can do is I can do anything really here. I can say event.target.innerHTML equals x. So now, if I click on something, ding, turns to an x. So this is, um, you know, I know it's a simplistic example, but I think really that's the best kind. Um, this is really a, a good example of unobtrusive JavaScript because normally, or not normally, but in the past, you know, we would have gone, uh, maybe we would have defined the whole grid here, and inside of the grid, we would have um, literally in the HTML just said on click equals this function. And now, you know, look here, it doesn't, again, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't say, you know, I'm promising that there's a method invocation, I'm passing these parameters. It's not just not really the, the place for that in this example. Um, you know, like I said before, especially when we start to get more data driven, you know, more responsing, uh, responsive from the server, um, the server will send you this big note of JSON and you're going to have to say, oh, I'm going to have to build this element out of that, you know, data. So, you know, this, you can apply this to any, pretty much any, um, what's the word, any events that you want. You can put, you know, a mouse over event, mouse down event, mouse up event, click event, um, uh, load event, and it's it's really that simple. I mean, you know, it's it's it sounds you know oh, unobtrusive JavaScript. It sounds like this very complicated technique, but it's really just maintaining um, the 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 three separate layers and not mixing concerns. So um, let's at least do something interesting. So I'm gonna say let's toggle the color. So that's pretty cool. You can do something like I'm gonna write another. Um, I can erase this one. This one doesn't really have any styles on it. I can say, how about 
there's a class called active. And active just means background color is red. So what I can do is I can say if event, well, let's do this. Um, I'll clean this up in a second. I'll say if event.target.className is equal to cell. So in this case, I clicked on um, just a plain old cell. Then I want to change it and say event.target.className is equal to cell active. So now it's two classes in one. So that should at least change the thing that I clicked on to a red background, and it does. But that's all it does. So how about if I say else, and this means that you know I, the thing that I clicked on didn't have the class name of cell, and the only really way that's possible is if I clicked on something that was cell active. So in that case, I'm just going to change it back to cell. So now I should get the best of both worlds. Hope, I think, mm, 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 mm. I make a typo. Event dot target dot class name equals cell. Okay, so I was just debugging this thing for about five minutes. <laughs> if you can, if you couldn't tell, and uh, I ran into a funky issue where, if you'll notice now, if I click on one square, I didn't notice this before, but it's actually firing the event twice. And the reason is because, and it's very important, um, I added the event listener inside of this method, create div, and create div is being called for both the cells and the rows. So it's saying, oh, you clicked on the cell, but you also clicked on the row. So I really don't want to put this in here because that's going to happen for cells and rows. I just want to add the event listener just to the cells. So I'm going to say listener. That's going to help a whole lot. So now, hopefully, it'll just ding once. And it did. All right, so now, oh, actually, if I get rid of, so now my code here should work. I hope. Red, gone. Red, gone. OK, so that's kind of, you know, that's kind of all I was going to do for this example. Um, I do have some more code to show you in a second, but one thing I guess I'll take this opportunity to show you just in case uh, you want some general programming tips. Uh, you don't ever want to do anything like this. If you ever see the, you know, a giant if-else statement like this, you can really shorten it down with a ternary operator. So the way you do that would be... Um, so you want to set event.target.className equals. So you give it a condition, and then a question mark, and a colon. So this is the condition. Let me move this over a little bit. So that's the condition, class name equals cell. The question mark, or after the question mark, you want to give it the positive value, that's that guy. And after the colon, you want to give it the negative value, which is cell. So now in like kind of one much more readable, hopefully, line of code, we can say, I'm setting the class name to, depending on you know whether class name is equal to cell, either this or that. So it's probably a little easier to read. It does the same thing, ding, 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 ding. Um, so that's kind of, I think I've reached kind of the end of my, uh, my example here. And like I said before, you know, unobtr unobtrusive JavaScript is not hard. It's not really complicated. That's why I wanted to get away with it in kind of two, two videos here. And, uh, you know, you can, you can go crazy with this and substitute any events that you want. You know, as long as you, you kind of get the idea that, um, you know, the behavior should be handled here in the JavaScript and the styling should be handled over here. And, um, you know, whatever you do, don't take this the wrong way and don't go overboard and don't like, you know, just say from now on, I'm going to put one div in my HTML and I'm just going to write my entire web page in JavaScript. That's not right either. That's doing the same exact thing. Now you're mixing the content and behavior all in the same layer. Um, you only want to build the content in JavaScript if one, you have to, or two, it makes your life easier. So, um, you know, you really, you've got three layers here and you want to utilize them to, to in, a, in such a way that it makes your life easier, it makes the application easier to read, easier to understand, easier to change. So, you know, you know, 
it's like you're the architect here you're making the decisions you have to figure out what you think is is the best way and you know in the discussion boards i've been hearing people debate the differences between you know different techniques like you know oh should i use tables should i use uh you know these grids of divs and you know these are good questions to be asking yourself before you code something you know in your design phase so that's kind of it uh, before um i guess i'll show you one more thing before I, I close this off and that's i thought since i came this far with this grid i looked at it and i was like oh i almost have like my myself a little paint program so i just changed a couple of lines of code i made a version two of this i just made these uh a lot smaller and i made a lot more of them and i took away the numbers and if you do that um, you really get something that looks a little bit like, well, let me show the code first. Um, so did I do anything noteworthy here? Um, I added a mouse down and a mouse up to the event listeners. This code is all on GitHub too, so you can look at it. Um, I, I said that, you know, I, had, I created this variable is painting. It's a Boolean variable and I set it to true when you click and when you then, when you release the mouse button, I set it back to false. So basically, you know, you can hold down the mouse button and uh, it'll be doing things. And then when you release the mouse button, it'll stop doing things. And I made 100 by 100 instead of 5 by 5. Aside from that, it's the same exact code, but it looks a lot cooler now. So hold the mouse down, I can do a little bit of painting, and I release it, and it stops. I can write my name. Oh, it's still a little bit quirky, but what do you want? It's a web page. Feel a lot better in Flash. Anyway, um, so uh, I'll try to think of a cool assignment for you guys to practice this. Remember, the whole um, exercise in uh, unobtrusive JavaScript for this week is to um, try and, let me see, I want to show you this, try and keep your HTML layer very um, structured in such a way that the content is represented minimalistically and in this case you see you know you have something like a grid that's going to be data driven and in that case you make the decision this is data driven there's going to be logic and I'm not sure what's going to happen with that logic and you know that logic is going to be responsible for the the outcome of the creation of this UI element and in that case you really don't need anything except you know here it is. Here it is in the DOM, and the JavaScript will will make it whatever it is in response to the data that's there, and you know the events that occur. So I, th I think this is a really good example of you know getting some cool behavior and har really not having any HTML at all. Hence the name Locma no, H no HTML. So um, you know it's almost 20 minutes there, so just stopping short of 40 minutes. I think uh, that describes most of the stuff that I wanted to. I just wanted to give you guys a, a little bit more of a look into some more JavaScript. Uh, a little more advanced and then uh, next week we'll really you know I'll really try to get um, more advanced with JavaScript since we're going to be introducing jQuery as well that'll kind of you know take all of the limits off I won't be able, I won't have to hold back at all uh, we'll kind of be at the point where we can start talking about all of JavaScript and you know leverage all of the different things that it has to offer so that's gonna be fun um, so I'm gonna make a make you guys a homework assignment now and I will talk to you soon